Communities Council also wishes to thank WYPR for their media partnership and Harbor Place and the Gallery for their advertising space. <laughs> Glad you joined us for Chautauqua 2005. I'm Angela Rice Beamer at the Germantown campus of Montgomery College. It's hard to believe that it's been seven years since Montgomery College started hosting Chautauqua on warm summer evenings, but we're here again for another evening where history comes alive. In the late 1800s, Chautauqua was a traveling road show that brought information and entertainment to small towns across the nation. But today, scholars do living history presentations to give us a glimpse of our past. It all started at Lake Chautauqua, New York, but tonight we're in Montgomery County, Maryland. Our theme is war and democracy, personal journeys. Our Chautauqua character this evening is Benjamin O. Davis, Jr. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. From Secretary Symington and General Spatz. Next month, the 15th of September, 1947, the United States will inaugurate a new armed service, the United States Air Force. The Army Air Force will cease to exist. Now, that's not a very good thing in my mind in some ways, I must tell you. I'm not sure it's going to be easy getting up in the morning putting a blue suit on. <laughs> I've been wearing khaki for the last 11 years, and I like it. My father was an Army officer, and I've been an Army officer since 1936. And wearing blue, it just sounds like something a naval officer would do. So I'm not sure about this. But that's what's going to happen. Now, the reasons for this are many. And I'm sure many of you are familiar, looking at the late war, with why we are beginning to do this. Air power was extremely important in winning the war. And having an air arm that is completely supported with its own logistical system, its own personnel system, its own training system, is very, very important to making sure air power is successful. Well, Secretary Symington, who will be sworn in next month, wants people around the country to know about this, and there are a number of briefings like this one that are going on in various places in these last couple of months. But now, when I arrived today, a number of people whom I met, asked if I would talk perhaps not just about the Air Force, but a little bit about myself and my own career. So I thought I'd perhaps take a few minutes and do that. I was commissioned in 1936. The class of 36 was, uh, well, of course, all of us went off to the Second World War, and a number of us became famous. I'm not one of those, I might point out at this point, but who knows? There, there is a future ahead of me. The class of 36, was 287 people. Now that's a medium-sized class for West Point. I was 35 in 287, but I wasn't able to choose my own branch. Normally, the first cadet, by tradition, is Corps of Engineers. Uh, General Lee was a member of the Corps of Engineers. Uh, General Pershing started as an engineer. Uh, my own first captain, uh, Colonel Westmoreland, started as a Corps of Engineers. Now, you choose your branch based upon your class standing. And my standing was high enough that I could have been able, I should have been able to choose any branch I wanted. And I wanted to fly. I wanted to join the Army Air Corps. Well, there was no room in the Army Air Corps for Negro flying officers. General Connor, who was the superintendent of the military academy during my four years there, uh, worked with me to find a branch. He was very helpful. Uh, he did all that he could to assure me that I could get into a branch that I wanted, but I refused to pick one. If the Army wouldn't let me have the Air Corps, I let the Army choose a branch for me. And that was the infantry. Now, those of you who've been, anyone here been in the infantry? One gentleman. Well, you'll certainly know the infantry is very much different than the Air Corps. They wear boots, they walk in the mud, all sorts of things happen to them that are very different from the Air Corps. That wasn't the branch I wanted, but that's where I went. I went off to the infantry for four years. I was assigned to Fort Benning, Georgia, to the 24th Infantry Regiment. There were only four places in the Army that I could go in 1936. The 9th and the 10th Cavalry, the 24th and the 25th Infantry. Those were the four Negro regiments in the Army at the time. And there was an Army regulation that did not allow 
Negro officers to command white officers or soldiers. So these were the only four places I could go. General O'Connor at the academy had explained this to me several times, and he made it clear that it was unlikely I would have a successful career in the Army. He suggested that after a year or so in the infantry, I request an assignment to a reserve unit, that I would go off and work with uh, reserves, National Guard, state militia somewhere, and he picked Chicago because that's where I had come on active duty from. I was nominated by Congress, Congressman Oscar de Priest in Chicago, although that wasn't my home. The congressman knew my father and was beneficial in giving me the appointment to the academy uh, because he wanted to have uh, a Negro cadet at the academy. There had not been one since, 1770, uh, since 1878 uh, when Henry Flipper graduated. So General Connor thought that I could go off to a reserve assignment work on a law degree or some other graduate degree, find a profession, and get out of the Army, in which he thought I'd be successful at doing something else. But I assured the general that I wanted to be in the Army. And after I left the academy, and General Connor went on to another job, he became Chief of Army Personnel, uh, we stayed in touch, and he continued to give me advice from time to time. And he went way beyond what was the requirement of uh, any academic supporting a student uh, by, by keeping in touch and giving me that advice. Well, I stayed in the infantry, as I said, for four years. After one year at the 24th Infantry, uh, General Connor let me know that it was likely that in 1938, I would go to the infantry advance course. So I would be promoted and I would move, uh, move ahead into the next school that's requirement uh, for a senior promotion in the Army. Now that was at least a year ahead of my contemporary. So that was very good. I had good proficiency reports from the 24th. Well, as it turned out, in 1937, I was selected for the infantry advance course and uh, went through the course, and I was at the top of my class there. I went afterwards, because now I'm ahead of my fellows uh, in, in some ways in terms of promotion, I went afterwards to Tuskegee University in the ROTC program. Now, that was the same job my father had held twice. And this was not a happy time for me. I wasn't sure this was going to be a good assignment for a number of reasons. First of all, my father had shuttled uh, between being a captain and a colonel, he had shuttled twice between two assignments at Tuskegee and two assignments at Wilberforce. While he asked for troop duty, he wanted to be with troops, he was a cavalry officer. While he wanted to be with troops and requested this duty, the Army denied this to him uh, for the last 20 years uh, of, his, uh, of his career. So he was very upset with that. And, but